In this video, I'm going to cover how to use the factory. Um, I left off in my last video with the refinery, and so if I pull up here to the to the factory, I may still have some explosives material that I left in there from previously. Oh, there's still a couple of hundred left. I do, however, still have 600 B mats on my person. So if I go to the map, the fa uh, the factory icon looks like this. And I'm at the home base in the Heartland, so we get all of these nifty buildings with their function uh, by default. Like the refinery, the factory also has to have various facilities unlocked before you can manufacture goods. So they all, as you can see here, this is the default factory, so we're getting all of them uh, default home base factory. So we're getting, so we, we start with the ability to be able to manufacture everything which you kind of have to have in order to get a start. But the further towards the uh, war effort or the front line we move, uh, the, the more, okay, I can talk if I try real hard, uh, the greater the need for materials. Um, so sometimes it's a good idea to try to upgrade these facilities closer to where the war is being fought. Otherwise, it's a longer trip for logistics guy like this guy in order to haul these goods to the front line. Of course, not everybody manufactures and hauls. Some people only manufacture and some people only haul. And uh, you'll see how that works in this video as well. So if you pull up to the factory, you hit E, you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll see here in the center all of the various things that you can construct. However, this is only for this tab and you can cycle through these tabs to get access to different items that we can that we can craft. What is available to be crafted depends on uh, whether or not we have the tech enabled to to craft it. So for example, we don't have the tech yet to create satchel charges, so it is it is grayed out. Now by mousing over you you'll get a little info panel. For example, it costs 200 200 B mats to uh, make one crate of sledgehammers, which will have 10 sledgehammers within the crate. And, and 100 B mats will create a one crate of radios and produces five radios in each crate. So the way you do this is you simply click what you want to produce, however many times you want to produce it. I want times two radios. Then you'll go over here and click this and then it will automatically pull materials. Now I think there uh, may have been some B-mats in here already that it pulled for them. I'm just going to go ahead and replenish. Uh, if there are any materials in here, explosives or B-mats, it'll automatically pull from the factory inventory before it pulls from your inventory. I believe that's how it works. Some items do require explosives as well. Uh, for example, if you look at the HE grenade, uh, one crate will produce, or one crate is good for 20 HE grenades, and it costs 180 B mats and 40 explosives in order to do that. Okay, I'm going to get out of the way here. A general good practice is to go ahead and queue up what you're manufacturing, and then get out of the way so that other people can get in there and do what they need to do, and then just do something else or wait a couple of minutes for your goods to be produced. And I don't quite remember how long I said. I think I said a couple of minutes. Let's go see how much time we have left. Oh, it looks like they're done. So once they're completed, then you can hit the uh, submit key and then they'll get pulled into your inventory. Now, I want to show you one more thing here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, produce, was this a tool? Yes, a tool. I'm going to go ahead and produce one more. So I'm going to click the radio icon and I'm going to hit the submit key the submit button and now it's producing it now notice over here it says personal that means I'm the only person that will be able to pick up this item once it's done if I however go here I can switch it over to public which means that anyone can pick up this crate once it's done I'll leave it up to you to decide which is most prudent uh, just keep in mind this the primary objective of producing goods is to usually get them to the front line Sometimes you're the best person to get them to the front line. Sometimes it's someone else. If you're the main person getting these supplies to the front line, then you may want to leave them a personal so that someone else 
doesn't end up misusing the item. Uh, however, if you're not sure or if you see lots of people doing logistics on that particular day, then you may want to set it to public. Now, once you have the crates, there's a couple, uh, couple of different things you can do with them. One of them is you can go to the home base right here and submit them. However, that's not a very good idea because there's usually not a lot of fighting going on at my current location here in Heartlands at home base. It's always good to have some supplies in here, but um, there is such thing as too much. A fuel is really handy here. Um, this is probably too much ammo for the home base and way too many rifles for the home base. So this is not a good place to place them. Once you have submitted items to a stockpile at, a, at an FOB or a home base or a, home or a uh, town hall, the only way to get them is one at a time by left clicking uh, when you're on foot. Or you can right click when in the vehicle to gather as many as three at a time. But it's time consuming. Uh, way more time consuming than uh, um, grabbing a crate. So for that reason, this isn't the best place. Now, if there were no radios here already, I might go ahead and submit one crate. Actually, I'll go ahead and do it anyway, because logistics guys need to always have radios on them so they can see what's going on the map, so they don't get themselves into trouble while trying to transport goods. So the way you submit a crate is simple. You just click here, it brings it up to the inventory slot, and then click Submit Stockpile Items. And you'll notice that the radios went up to 18, and so did those uh, four uh, um, magazines that I also put back in there. However, usually you're going to want these radios to get to any FOBs that are involved in the war effort. If you're not sure where that is, or if you're leaving that to someone else, then you'll want to go over here to the Storage Depot. Storage Depot looks like this on the map. Uh, again, the legend is over here, Storage Depot. The Storage Depot, is, aside from your own vehicle, is pretty much the only other location that you can store entire crates. So if you go here and you hit E, um, you'll notice, I don't know why these are in here. Maybe someone doesn't realize they don't go here. You'll notice that there's a stockpile here. However, these aren't individual items like you would see in a normal uh, base. These are crates. So, for example, let me try to find one that I think is kind of, what is this? Field machine gun. So, you know, I'll just do the radio as an example. So if I click the radio, we have to wait for the time to assemble the crate. And this time, instead of getting a single radio, we'll get a crate of radios and then I could move that crate to the front line if need be. So it's a little bit different than other, it's not really a base, it's a storage depot and it's, it, it basically it stores crates. This works the same way that uh, the uh, stockpiles do. Simply left click to place the crate in there and then submit and it will submit. And now you can see we're up to 22 crates of radios. I'm going to go ahead and grab these two. Sometimes people will also store shirts in here because this is uh, one of... You can put shirts in a, in a storage chest as well, but once they get submitted to an FOB, you can't pull them out. So oftentimes, people that stay behind the lines and are producing goods for the front line will also put shirts in here as well. So as you learn more about these buildings and how they work and, and are more comfortable with it, you're going to start to spot um, mistakes here and there. I don't know why that's not getting pulled in there. Kind of odd. Uh, for example, someone left a blueprint here in the refinery. However, that's not really where it goes. It's not going to do anybody any good there. Oh, I already have the units. I was thinking it was scrap as well. So while I'm here, I'm just going to grab it, and I'm going to move it over here into the one of the vehicle factories, which is where which is where they would go. So doing minor things like this can help in the long run. So I'm just going to go ahead and submit that. So now we can build one more love light utility vehicle. That helps, doing small things like that helps keep the inventory for the buildings um, uh, small and relevant only to what that building is capable of doing. 
and it ensures that a resource isn't getting wasted. And you're going to see a lot of that simply because there's a lot of people that don't quite understand how everything works yet and all they know is they have an item in their inventory they don't know what to do with it so they're just going to stick it in there and wait for someone like you that does understand what to do with it to put it to good use. And I think I'm just going to stop there. Uh, so we covered the factory and the storage depot and uh, I think and I've already done the uh, vehicle um, uh, what do they call it again? I keep forgetting what they, I keep wanting to call them a garage but uh, I'm totally lost right now. I guess they're called the vehicle factory. I keep also wanting to say vehicle manufacturing plant but I guess vehicle factory is the same difference. So I really only want to do one more at this point and that is the tech center. So I'll do that in the next video.